Wendy Champagne, the director of Class Beyond the Red Light. Hi, thank you so much, Inspector, for um, programming us, especially in this opening night. It's uh, great for us to be here, and I really look forward to some lively debate. Um, really, our film, its sole purpose is to try, I think, to help, uh, as a filmmaker, to to take a different relationship to an issue, a social justice issue, and to just look at different ways we can do that, to do that in film. So I chose a particular route, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. It's a very important issue for me, child trafficking, and I, uh, and I also want to stress that I think it's not a film, it's not an issue that has to do with being far away, specifically an issue for everyone, everywhere in the world, and especially here in Quebec. So I hope you can do the film with that in mind as well. Okay, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll talk to you afterwards. Um, my name is Genya. I'm from Artists Without Borders Canada. Um, we do similar kinds of projects, but not for not for filming though. Can you just explain uh, how many years you've been through this project and and how it did uh, start? Well, the film is a. I mean, people in the film studies program would know that it's a journey, and uh, for me, it started off in, in Nepal. It took four years. Yeah. And over that period of time, I learned a lot. I became close to the girls, and my story developed in that way. From the very beginning, I always wanted to make a music video because all of these girls love to dance and sing, and they do dance therapy in Nepal at that time. And uh, it just, when I saw that, I realized that um, there's so much joy there. There's so much of a the, the victim, a victim can be painted in a very dark way, you know, in a very sort of relentless way. And what I was struck with so often was the resilience of these girls. And I really, that became a, a big drive for me to create a film. But I had to put all the elements in there, so it's got, it really was tough to do. I wanted us to form relationships with those girls that I had. I wanted us to see them as I saw them and feel them as real human beings. So, so um, but the art, the dancing and these things are incredible instruments for them to take back power into their lives. Hi. Um, it's hard, I guess, when you're watching a, a film like this to know. I mean, I know you you have a story you want to tell and, and you want to be able to express the, the context in that story. And so it's hard to know what you just couldn't fit in. Because I'm feeling, seeing this organization, I'm, I'm filled with a bunch of questions about the sort of unsustainability of that project. They don't seem to be doing as much work educating a community about the risks involved as sort of this kind of take individual girls and, I mean, are they getting any training beyond a sort of arts dance or are they actually also getting sort of an education and schooling and other skill sets and other areas that if they don't get married, they have options beyond when they turn 18. The, the Rescue Foundation does what it says in the name. It's a rescue foundation, and so much of their resources goes into that. And it's a, as you can see, I mean, I try to show that, I, I try to show my doubt by representing a certain ambivalence in the film. The rescues don't usually work. They very often round up a whole bunch of people, the girls are taken to another place, and then the working women end up having to pay for it by going to jail and getting in debt to a money lender to get out and to start working again. Hopefully uh, that's going to change because when we um, made the film we actually uh, connected Children's Care International here in Montreal with the Rescue Foundation uh, with the idea of, of a project that would uh, be focused on education of the girls. And so, um, you know, the donations that were given tonight are going directly for that project. But again, it's a sort of reliance on a Western model and a Western sort of... No, uh, Children's Care International always, always work with a local um, either school or uh, foundation. I was wondering how you convinced the uh, trafficker to speak on camera. Um, well, in the case of uh, uh, the traffickers, uh, I think especially in um, 
uh, Turbe. Yeah. Um, well, the funny thing is these traffickers are business people, and if they, they can make a dollar giving information to somebody, they'll do it. Um, so the Rescue Foundation and the other uh, activist, Afsal, which you see uh, in, the, in the beginning of the film, um, gives them money to get information about where underage uh, girls are kept. Um, and um, in the case of Suresh, he was very clever not to ever disclose that that's what he does for a living and that he's actually traffic young girls, but he knows so much about it that he has to be a trafficker. The Rescue Foundation knows him as a trafficker and they, 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 um, they sometimes pay money to informants. I also want to add that I included Suresh because I wanted to underscore the financial aspect of trafficking. That he, and he, he truly is an entrepreneur and he came across um, not as a man without morals but as a man who was driven by economy. There was a market and he was supplying the market and he was very matter of fact in that way. And in a sense, uh, some people believe that that's really Understanding that is the, the beginning of us to be able to address the issue of trafficking because if you can take away the, um, the market, there's no need for the supply. Hi, uh, I'm from India and uh, it was interesting to see the documentary. Uh, how serious is the problem of child trafficking in, in India? That's my first question and I, I just wanted to know if uh, you have uh, tried to sort of market this documentary or movie in, in India? Well, I think in, 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 in cities like Mumbai, child trafficking is exacerbated because it's this massive migrant population. And, a lot, and this is a big issue in India itself, I guess you know that when the, because there's a you know, strong fundalist, fundamentalist movement there that doesn't like workers from other states to come and work in your state to take the jobs of other ones, especially in Maharashtra, it's very big. But mostly, it's the migrant populations, the young workers who stream into Mumbai every day that go to the brothels, that look for the women. So it's a strange kind of uh, world. These brothels have existed for all time, but now they're changing shape for the for the kind of new people that are coming in now, the girls are very often taken to uh, out of suburban motels, and the, and, the, and the motel manager will have laminated pictures of all the girls who'll be kept in a safe house down the road, and they'll be brought up one by one for the customers. So it's a little less sort of ugly in a way, but as uh, as damaging and pervasive. Um, India has a massive problem with child trafficking. Uh, I think. Next to Thailand, I think it's the biggest in the world. It's 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 enormous. The the estimates that they make for child trafficking around the world that this is a very conservative estimate is about 1.2 million children uh, trafficked into sex work every year. I would love to screen this film in India, but I am um, I I, mad, I I we have talked to other people about it. It's much more difficult than it seems to do, but I st it's still a real dream for me and I hope that we can get it seen there and that uh, it gets talked about. <laughs>